为一言，放心当下。Hey everybody! Welcome. My name is Hung Shu. Glad you're here. Today is Saturday, February the tenth, in the brand new year of the dragon here in Australia. It is New Year's Eve、uh, in other parts of the world, and we're glad that you're with us. Thank you all for joining.、Uh, we have a、uh, Chinese translation of the words that I'm saying. If you would like to hear a Mandarin translation, please go down to the bottom right-hand corner of your、uh, browser of your、uh, Zoom software, and you'll find a little globe, a picture of a globe, and it says interpretation, and you'll find Chinese right there. And、uh, let me say that in Chinese. 如果大家啊、uh, 想听一种流利的呃、uh, 普通话的翻译。那么你的控制板的右下角有个地球，那个地球姓的样子的，你就 click 在那个地方就就 Chinese 就可以听得到啊。我们有义工呃，就提供这个流利的中文翻译哈、啊。And if you'd like to hear a Vietnamese translation, uh, go to the chat box and you'll find uh a link to a separate Vietnamese translation of my words and. You're very welcome to to listen in. Glad you're here. 各位欢迎啊！我们啊，龙年龙年，就是龙年大吉了啊 ！Happy New Year, everyone. 就是龙年的第一天，在澳大利亚，在呃那个上半球呢啊还没到了，在美国是我们现在是 New Year's Eve 啊，就明天开始。Okay, now let's get going with a. Full size Dharma request. Today we have two Dharma friends who are going to help us request Dharma. And as Connie is going to do English, and Chanyu is going to do the Chinese. So glad for that. Let's、uh, here we go. I'm going to bring our screen around. Now I'm going to hit my hand bell three times and invite you all to join me in doing three half. See three half bows. Okay, we will first bow our heads. Bow three times. Everyone can bow together. Bow three times. Bow three times. Bow three times. Okay,、uh, Chen Yu, Connie, if you'd like to request Dharma, please go ahead. Ong Jing Da Da Sang Ting, Wei Zi Fa Hui Ji, Jie Zhong Sheng, Xin Zhuan Miao Fa Lun, Jiao Da Ho Wo Men. 如何了生脱死，离苦得乐，速证无生。Well, the Sangha with great virtue, out of compassion, for the sake of this assembly and all living beings, please turn the wonderful Dharma well. To teach us how to leave suffering, and attain bliss, and end birth and death, and quickly realize non-birth. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. 
Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sarando Suchedoye, Allah di Samyao Samputoshi. Namo Sarando Suchadoya, Allah di Samyao Samputoshi. Usham Shen Shen Wei Miao Fa by Chen Wan Jie Nan Zao Yu. Wajin Jen Wan De Shou Chi Yen Jie Rulai Chen Shi Yi. Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound. Rarely is encountered, even in billions of eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. Okay, welcome everyone. Venerable Master, Dhamma friends. Uh, we are going to be looking into Master Empty Cloud's picture biography. I'm sitting here in the library on a Saturday afternoon at Gold Coast Dhamma Realm. We uh, performed our uh, New Year's Eve celebration last night and a blessing ceremony. And today we're halfway uh, between our Medicine Buddha repentance to get the year started off right. So uh, later on this afternoon, there's going to be the second half of the repentance. Uh, so we're, we're uh, quite involved in welcoming the year of the dragon. So uh, in order to honor the those who come before, I'd like to say that we respectfully acknowledge the Kombu Mary people of the Ugambi language region as traditional storytellers and custodians of the land where our monastery is located. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and to all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. <laughs> Chantong Moving through to the bell song. The bell sound wide resounds throughout a hundred million worlds. The Buddha's law is heard and spread all throughout the triple world. The wondrous sounds that everywhere fill the Dharma realm with peace. May those who hear it gain the strength to follow in faith the Buddha's path. <laughs> That's the idea. Okay, well done. Uh, now, I want to say, before we get started, that uh, today's topic is uh, in Master Empty Cloud's journey. He has begun his Three Steps, One Bow pilgrimage today in our, in our telling of his story. And... Uh, I'm going to give two episodes from, from that long pilgrimage. And we're going to be, because his pilgrimage was multiple years, uh, we're going to be talking about his Sambui Bai for, for quite a few weeks here in our, in our retelling of the story. So um, if anybody has questions about Three Steps, One Bow, the Dharma method, the, the Fa'aman, the method of the practice, please uh, don't hesitate to bring them up to ask them. Um, I have some experience with Three Steps, One Bow, and I would be happy to uh, share any questions that people might have as, as you listen to the lecture. So just to let folks know that that's uh, going to be an option. 
Okay, what else? Uh, I'd like to say who's here today. Our host is in San Jose and in Sunnyvale, our co-hosts. We have a co-host, Iwan is here from Ukiah. Uh, Cliff is here translating as a co-host as well. And let's see here. Uh, we have uh, uh, Agnieszka is here from Poland. Okay, and Melissa from Bay Area. Celeste from Hong Kong. Cynthia is here from uh, Saratoga. Elaine from Round Rock. Hong Ha from Alameda. Jasmine from Murrieta. That's Georgia. My goodness. Kevin is here on the Gold Coast. Let's see here. Lee is in Waterloo, Ontario. Lynn is in San Rafael, California. Liz is in New York City's Chinatown. Loy is in Singapore. Every week he's here. Let's see here. We have friends from Liaoning, from the Bay Area. Michael's in St. Petersburg, Florida. Let's see here. Uh, Juan is in Mesa, Arizona. Paul's in Pinole. Peggy's in Calgary. Okay. Zhang Qingbo is in Shanxi. Baoji, okay, far away. Uh, let's see here. Ron is in San Jose. Sarah's in Tennessee. Wow, welcome. Cheryl's with us from Kaya. Sylvia is in Seattle. Tina is in Oklahoma. Okay, let's see here. YC's in Ukiah. Where else? Okay, now we're going to go to Hangzhou. Let's see here. Uh, that is Lancheng and Xini. Not Bosha Zhongguo. Hayoshima, Heilongjiang, Zhejiang, Lanhai, Beijing, Liaoning, Quanzhou, uh, Fujian, Jilin, uh, Dongbei, Anhui, uh, Shandong, Beijing, Hebei, Tangshan, Shenzhen, uh, Harbin, Zhejiang, Wow, Hando Difang, Nanjing, uh, let's see here, Hainan Dao, okay. Shanghai, Liaoning, Shanghai, Shanghai, Shanghai. Oh, and those are Shanghai. Okay, good. Welcome, everyone. Huan Ying Uh Let's see here. Should somebody like to request Dharma in the future, please go to the chat box and send an email to the email address you see there. We'll get you set up so you can request Dharma, which is tremendous gong uh, for your future. If you, because you in a symbolic ritual way, make it possible for others to hear the Dharma. The result is in lifetime after lifetime, you yourself get to hear the Dharma and meet up with wholesome friends who want to help you uh, work back to your own heart and get through all the confusion and all of the side roads that we can take in a life to kind of lead us nowhere. And when you find the road back to your own heart through studying the Dharma, uh, that road leads somewhere. That's where the gold, that's where the real treasure lies. Okay. And again, before we get started, Happy New Year, everyone. I'm supposed to say to you, Long Nian Da Ji. Yeah, all those good things. Here he is. It is 1882. Our teacher is age 43. And the title says, Fa Da Yuan Chao Qing Liang Shan. He made a great vow to be a pilgrim, to do a pilgrimage to Clear and Cool Mountain, Qing Liang Shan, that's Wu Tai Shan, Five Peaks, bowing once every three steps. Okay, are we ready? Those of you who are able, please read with me if you like. Uh, and it's for those of you who are learning your Chinese, this is a perfect opportunity to learn some good classical Chinese. Here we go. Ready? Right here. Gong Chu Jia Er Shi Yu Nian Dao Ye Wei Cheng Chu Lao Wei Bao Gu Fa Yuan Zai Chao Nan Hai Yo Fa Hua An Qi Xiang Bei Li Wu Tai Qing Liang Shan San Bu Yi Bai, Chu Yo Pian Zhen, Jue Sheng, Shan Xia, Chiu Ning, Si Chan Ren Fu Xiang, Mei Ri Xing Bai Bu Yuan, Fu Xiang Zhe, Jian Sheng, Tui Xin, Nan Yi Zai. Yes. 
Exclamation point. Nan yi zai. Ready? The master had at this point left the home life for more than 20 years, but he had not yet completed his work in the way. Wishing to repay his parents' kindness, he vowed to make a pilgrimage again to Nan Hai. So that is to say, Southern Mountain, a.k.a. Puto Shan. Then, beginning from Fa Hua, Dharma Flower Temple, he made one full prostration every three steps, heading north all the way to Qingliang Peak at Wu Tai, Five Peaks Mountain. At the outset, four Chan monks, Pian Zhen, Pervasive Truth, Jue Sheng, Enlightened Vehicle, Shan Xia, Distant Mountains, and Chiu Ning, Autumn Freeze, accompanied the master. But the daily progress, walking and bowing, was grueling, and they gradually had thoughts of withdrawing. It was not easy going. Amen. Okay. So the Chinese is pretty straightforward. Um, interesting that he records the name of four, uh, four monks who started out with him on the pilgrimage, but who didn't last long. He calls them Su Chanren, four Chan cultivators. Chan people, Zen guys, four Zen guys. Uh, and what did they do? They Fu Xiang. <coughs> the picture gives us, look at the picture. Here, here's this monk carrying a huge stick of incense. And I guess that was the custom that um, when somebody made a vow to bow, and here's our monk, this is Master Mt. Cloud. He's been a monk for 20 years now. 20 years in robes. He's a Mahatera. And uh, he's, you can see his incense burns in his patched robe. And he's kneeling on his way down to a bow. The, uh, the four monks beside him are chanting. One has his palms together. Two of them are holding heavy packs. Because they've got the goods. They've got the gear on their packs, in their backs. And this monk is holding a very long stick of incense. And notice there are uh, people supporting on the outside, but he is leaving the monastery. This is obviously a monastery because of the roof style. So out he goes into the world beyond the comfortable, safe walls of the monastery. There he goes. Good, good picture, right? It's got lots of uh, pictorial elements, a lot of stories told from this picture. So um, the, the commentary, he says, okay, we got a question, good. Uh, the commentary includes the reality that every day they traveled not very far, they didn't get very far. And the ones holding incense bit by bit retreated. Their literally fell back mind. Their mind fell back. So they had thoughts of retreat. And these, these points are um, probably worth bringing up, which is um, the, the reality of bowing this way, this kind of a pilgrimage, is that it's very physical. It's like slow yoga, if you can imagine. Um, now, I'm here in the monastery in Gold Coast, where everybody here is, is familiar with bowing. This is one of our major practices, is making full prostrations. But if you, um, when you go out of a religious space into the world, people don't bow. We don't put our bodies down to the ground. Uh, there, most religions, with a few exceptions, most religions have bowing as a practice. Uh, Catholics genuflect. Uh, they do um, different. They do half bows, and and when Catholic bishops get ordained, they do full bows, right flat, flat bows, like a Tibetan kind of bow. Um, and uh, Islam, Muslims do uh, Salat, they, they do 
bowing, putting their face to the ground, very similar to a Theravada style bow, where you start from your knees. So anybody who has had the opportunity to observe uh, a worship ceremony in a mosque with our Muslim friends, uh, they, there they bow. That's, that's very similar, very familiar. Um, in uh, Hinduism, uh, you do uh, put up uh, Anjali, right? Palms together and, and they do a namaste and do a, a gentle half bow with palms together. So many religions have ritual gestures, um, but Buddhism really begins uh, the cultivation of, of uh, the Dharma in a, in a, when you want to focus when you really want to make a practice of cultivation, pretty quickly you'll be bowing, no matter whether it's Theravada, Mahayana, or Vajrayana. When you go to Thailand or Sri Lanka or Burma, Cambodia, Laos, or where the Theravada tradition has traveled, people pretty much have taken their shoes off and are on their knees already. Uh, those are temp countries with a hot temperature and people, uh, so you're already on the floor. So the bowing happens from the knees, not from the a standing start. In the Mahayana tradition, the, the uh, temperature is often much colder. People have shoes on or boots that they have to lace up. Um, so often in their practice, they don't take their shoes off before they go into the worship hall and they start from a standing bow. So they go down what's called a five point bow, first to the knees, then the two hands, and then the top of the head. And you return by standing up again to a full standing position. So that's the Mahayana bow. And then you go to the Tibetan style, which uh, I've never practiced in any way, but I watched it a lot. Uh, I had the opportunity uh, a few Christmases ago to spend the night under the Bodhi tree uh, in India and talk about pilgrimages. The Tibetan Buddhist world is, uh, there are lots and lots of people who volunteer to practice full body bowing. And you need something, you need something like a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood so that you can slide down you go down, uh, put your, your whole body on the, the cardboard of the piece of wood and slide out to a full prostration, your whole body on the ground, not the five-point bow that we have. So in Buddhism, there are these three major kinds of bowings, uh, including things like a wanshin, a half bow, palms together, uh, and a variety of other ritual gestures. But it's a important point of beginning practice. For example, our teacher, Master Shenhua, um, as a young boy, just between, starting at the age of 10, started to make uh, bows to his parents and to his teachers whom he hadn't met, to the Buddhas of the past, the present, and the future, and began a vigorous practice of bowing in his backyard in Manchuria to a total of uh, 830 bows a day, twice, morning and night. Many hours spent making prostrations. So here's somebody who really deeply entered the practice of bowing. And Master Empty Cloud is here. Uh, he, he, the, the first sentence kind of suggests that maybe he wasn't satisfied with his progress at that point. Chu Lao Wei Bao. He felt like he hadn't really uh, fulfilled his vows to repay his parents' kindness through cultivation. So he said, I'm going to start at Nanhai. Nanhai is Putoshan, and that's where I'm going to qi xiang, pick up the incense, literally, meaning get started, and then go all the way across China to Shanxi province, to Wu Shan, which is both west and north. Um, it's a long way. It's 3,000 Chinese miles, which is a thousand, uh, about a thousand Western miles. And he's going three steps, one bow. Now, I don't know um, 
in the sutras, I haven't seen uh, any mention of this as a practice. Maybe somebody has a better grasp of the sutras can point to somewhere that this, this practice began. Um, in any case, uh, <coughs> Master Empty Cloud's pilgrimage that began in 1882 was uh, very influential for a lot of us uh, at Gold Mountain Monastery in San Francisco, the very early years when Master Hua began to teach. So um, I got to not only read about Master Empty Cloud, I also got to witness Bhikshu Hangju and Hang Yo, uh, two of my Dharma seniors who practiced Three Steps One Bao from San Francisco all the way north to Seattle and to Marble Mount, which is uh, a branch monastery east of Seattle. So I witnessed, uh, one of the monks was my former college roommate. So I really identified with this young man who was the Dharma protector, while his bowing monk, uh, Bhikshu Hangju, made three large steps, went down to the, to the ground, stood up, made three big steps, bowed to the ground. Tim uh, Testu, Bhikshu Hangju, was a physically very strong individual. Tim was tough. He was a, uh, in the Navy, he was the official diver for a submarine crew. So if you're working in the submarine, you've got, you're, you're t tried and tested. You're a, a warrior. To be the ship's diver out of the submarine, you got to be the warrior among the warriors. Well, that was Tim. And uh, so for him, uh, traveling miles along the highway every day, regardless of the weather, in rain or shine, still bowing, um, he, he was in his element. He loved it. Uh, that was, he could really do it. Um, so I witnessed the two of them, and I was present when they arrived at their destination and, and uh, very much identified with uh, the first three steps from bow. And then uh, I had the opportunity to do a similar pilgrimage and make, make my vows the same way. So um, this is the, the circumstances. The motivation for Master Empty Cloud was a sense of a vow unfulfilled. He, we know that um, his mother passed away in childbirth. And that really marked his mentality throughout his life as a monk, that he felt like his arriving was his, the cause of his mother's departure. And that's, uh, no son wants to have that on his mind for the rest of his life without doing something about it. So he um, uh, left home and cultivated asceticism, and then learned the Dharma and studied as much as he could about the teachings. And then he thought, Mm, I'm going to uh, accelerate my progress and focus on my mind. Three steps, one bow. Look at Master Hua's uh, verse. If you want to know what was it like to do three steps, one bow, notice there's one word here that's repeated in every line. Difficult. This is hard. It's really hard. Okay? What is it? He says, nan xing, nang xing. Shi Chen Xing Nan Ren Nang Ren Shi Chen Ren Nan Xiu Nang Xiu Shi Chen Xiu Nan Shou Nang Shou Shi Chen Shou Right? Doing what is difficult is true action. Enduring the unbearable, unbearable is true patience. Practicing what is challenging is true cultivation. Accepting the unpleasant is true endurance. So this particular phrase we heard from Shifu a lot, uh, if you can do what's difficult to do, if you can practice what's hard to practice, that's real practice, he says. Uh, and this was the one that we heard the most. If you can be patient uh, with what is basically unbearable, um, that's real patience. To be able to wait again while somebody's in your face Waiting once, waiting twice, that's easy. If you can wait that third time without exploding, that's real patience. Cultivating what's difficult to cultivate is something that most people don't want to do. 
So you have to really uh, have some grit, some vows behind you that keep you on the path when others would stop. And then just accepting what comes, non-show, receiving it and accepting it with a sense of uh, uh, you say a philosophical renunciation of self, just saying whatever comes is my share. That's really hard to do, really hard. So that's the start. There is the beginning of this three steps on bow. And we know from, because we, we can read the whole book, we know that at the end of his three steps on bow pilgrimage, he didn't get enlightened. It wasn't the end of his cultivation. He still had years to go before his enlightenment experience, which happened at Gaminsu. But clearly, um, this was plowing the ground, you could say. This was taking his, uh, his mind and shaking it up. Just really uh, think of a rot rototiller on hard ground. You got a side lot that you want to turn into a garden, and you get that gas-powered, which is chop, 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 chop. And it's really strong. The rototiller really uh, grooves into this hard-packed ground. The mind, even a mind like Master Empty Clouds, is like that piece of ground. And in order to get in there and break up our what? Sense of self, our arrogance, our low self-esteem, our sense of failure, our sense of, uh, you know, quick to anger. All of these habits are not fundamental. They're learned, they're practiced, that's why they're habits. So how are you going to defeat them? How are you going to transform them? You have to use your own mind, your own faith in the Dharma and practices that are geared to uh, transform your mental situation. That's why there are 84,000 methods. And bowing is a really, really good one. The key, I think, to understanding what's going on here is the practice itself, the bowing. Notice the picture is the monk in front with his knees on the ground heading south and going down. And the thing is, this is what you can't appreciate simply intellectually by looking at it is if you think during 24 hours of every day, there's one time when our head and our heart are on the same level. And that would be, of course, when we're asleep. So what happens when we're asleep? Well, um, our eyes close, our ears are still awake, but they're not reporting to the ear consciousness. Nose, tongue, not you being used. Body, yeah, comfortable, you roll over, too hot, too cold. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body are essentially uh, shut off. But the mind is still awake. And so what do we do? We dream. Uh, and sleep is actually, in terms of the mind, is very active. There are different stages, including REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, when, which is where we dream. And you don't get there in a hurry. You have to go through every stage to get to the REM sleep, and there's different stages of that. And then we, we come back up. Um, the fact that we're sleeping prone has a lot to do with the availability of the body to wash those dreams through. If we were standing up, gravity has a pull on circulation. And so, furthermore, our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body are awake. So, it's very interesting how physiology of lying down flat is important to the healing property of sleep and dreams. What happens when we put our head on the same level as our heart, but we're all awake. 
our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body are still sending input into the mind instead of shutting down <coughs> and receiving the images from inside the mind. Hmm. You wonder if those dreams while sleeping could be the eighth consciousness feeding images back across the seventh consciousness into the sixth consciousness where we see them as pictures and uh, experiences. Could be. That's an interesting theory. Now, what about when we're awake? Hmm. Is the same thing happening with the helpful circulation of head and heart on the same level? Furthermore, when we're bowing, our bigger muscles, the lower back, the thighs, the, the, the connective tissue of the shoulders are flat on the ground and relaxed, not tense as they are when we're sitting, standing straight up. So this bowing practice, this way of making a prostration has a lot to do with opening up the mind and allowing experiences to emerge that ordinarily, if we were simply standing or sitting or with our head high and our, our back straight, would not happen. So there is something profound going on about this bowing practice. And anybody who has done it will know that you can be bowing in the middle of a Buddha hall or at home in your altar, and suddenly these images from long ago, maybe even past lives, long before we were carrying our current face, emerge to consciousness. It's kind of amazing how that happens. So bowing is a perfect uh, practice in order to break through that layers and layers of me and mine and what I like and what I hate and what I'm afraid of and what I want, right? So this is a, this is a wonderful practice to, to engage in, but be prepared as you do it because the practice will bring you back into the corners of your life that you maybe had uh, shoved into the shadow because you didn't want to see them, or maybe uh, you're ready. You really want to do a deep dive into your personal attic or basement where you store your old images of self away. Yeah, it's that powerful. Uh, ask somebody who's done a lot of bowing and you can, they'll tell you that is true. Here we go. Next year, right? Well, actually, no. It took, he started at Putoshan. Now he has to get across the uh, the South China Sea to the mainland, and he landed at Huzhou, which is in Zhejiang. Ready? Here we go. Guo Hai Deng An Reng Shi San Bu Yi Bai Ri Ri Ru Shi Feng Yu Wu Zu Ye Zhong Ming Yue Dang Kong Wan Lai Chu Mei Shi Yi Xiang Qian Ko Bai Ran Xing Lu Ye Budo Ru Shi Ri Fu Yi Shi Jian Jian Ar Jin Zhi Chu Jiang Bei Bu Hu Zhou Nai Zhan Shi Ting Shi Bai Xiang Lue Wei Xiu Shi Xiu Ri Shu Ri Okay, here we go. After crossing the sea and reaching the mainland, the master continued to make a full prostration once every three steps. He did so day after day without interruption, despite the inclement weather. Under the bright moon at night, when all other sounds were hushed, he moved ahead by bowing to the ground. Although the distance he traveled each day was modest, yet he made gradual daily progress. He arrived at Huzhou in the north of Zhejiang province and paused the bowing for several days to rest briefly. Okay. Now, one comment that pops right out to me is, uh, what kind of road was he bowing on? What kind of road surface? Because that makes a big difference. Um, the the difficulty of bowing comes from the fact that you're putting your, yourself, putting your body down on the ground uh, over and over and over. 
And what's on the ground? Well, everything is on the ground. Uh, broken glass, rocks, uh, hubcaps, uh, uh, you know, can lids, bottle caps, uh, dog poop, newspapers, used to be, not anymore, and uh, concrete. And those road surfaces, when the sun has been shining on them, are usually add 20, 20 degrees in heat. So blacktop or macadam or uh, in, in Australia, it's called bitumen, bitumen, bitumen. That, that gets, that adds about 20 degrees on a sunny day. So you don't get a chance to avoid bowing where you don't want to bow. You have to keep bowing. You just keep going. So if you, if you don't toughen up, um, it's going to be very challenging for you. We, I remember uh, when we were still close to LA, on my pilgrimage along with my companion, um, some, uh, one of our uh, chief Dharma protectors, Helen, Helen Wu, brought out uh, some friends from Hong Kong who wanted, who had heard about Three Steps and Bow and wanted to come out and try it out. And uh, they were, you could see they, they had, they were in a, a very romantic head view of what it must be like because they came out in basically in uh, tennis clothes, you know, just tennis shoes and shorts. And, and so they, uh, the road was fairly wide. We were on a grassy uh, parkway. And the, uh, so the, this, these uh, three people from Hong Kong got in line behind us and bowed three times and went, oh, it hurts. <laughs> and, and, and they had to make a quick decision whether this was, they were going to continue or not. And it, because they, they didn't know. And so they came out and, and wound up with uh, uh, bruised knees and, and bloody, bloody hands. And they, they didn't know and they hadn't prepared. So uh, it's, it is a challenge to the body to, to submit. You just give in. You surrender to the reality around you and just try to become one with the conditions. So here is Master Empty Cloud who left Putoshan, crossed over to the mainland, to Zhejiang province. And uh, let's see if I've still got it up. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Uh, Hujo Zhejiang, China. So Hujo is here. Right there. Puto Shan is out here. This is, Shanghai is here. Uh, let's see here. I want to close. There we go. Okay, so you can see here is Ningbo. Here is Jiaxing. And Hujo, Hangzhou is right here. Okay, so he was, uh, you can't, they don't have Putoshan in the ocean here. Uh, let's see here, I lost Hujo. Hujo is here, right there. So it's on the shores of Taihu. Tai uh, over here is uh, Wuxi up in the north. Right here, here is Suzhou. And so Master Empty Cloud landed here, uh, probably at Ningbo, I suspect. And uh, Ningbo down here and started bowing. And he bowed towards Hu Zhou. Now his destination, his destination was Wu Taishan, which is up here, right? So he had to travel all that way and make a large, long pilgrimage. Okay. Now, um, so here he is making a full bow every three steps. The thing that popped out to me was he's bowing at night. And uh, uh, Bhikshu Hung Chao, Marty and I tried to bow at night for a total of uh, two days. And we said, nope, nope, bad idea because there aren't any lights out on the highway unless you happen to be under a street light. But in the country, 
there aren't street lights. And if there's no full moon, um, you don't know what you're bowing down to. And you could be bowing right down into a broken beer bottle uh, or bowing right off the road if, there's, if it's rough, if this, the, the pavement stops and, you know. Furthermore, you can't be seen at night. That's the important part. Now, during uh, Master Empty Clouds time, there were certainly uh, vehicles on the road, but no uh, internal combustion engines. Anything that came by was a horse, horse-drawn vehicle, 19, 18, 1880. So he wasn't in such a danger of being, you know, squashed under the wheels of a, of a car speeding along that didn't see him. So we decided that it was better to sleep at night and bow during the day. Um, of course, he was, uh, he wanted to aim towards his goal. He wanted more mileage. So he moved ahead by bowing to the ground. It says the distance he traveled every day was modest, but he made gradual daily progress. Um, I made a mile a day, uh, an, an American mile, and that was with eight hours of bowing. So uh, with one meal in between at, at midday. And uh, he, Master Empty Cloud, certainly uh, was, he was famous for being able to bow a lot. Uh, we'll, we'll meet him back at King Ashoka Temple in the, later, and he bows a couple thousand times a day, again to repay his mother's kindness. That's, that's up ahead. But uh, uh, I think the reason he included night bowing was probably just to increase the, the distance. In any case, it's tough. It's hard to do. Here he is. You see the the uh, the walls of the city. What's going on here? Oops. Hold on. Here we go. There we go. The walls of the city say Hujo. I'm going to close this and open it again. There we go. There he is. Aha, there we go. So you can see over the city gate, says Hujo, here he is, uh, coming out of apparently tall mountains and the ocean, so He's on his way, and uh, this, the, the point that, that Shurfu makes in picking out his story here is that bit by bit, he was all alone, bowing by himself now. And the verse that Shurfu wrote said, Xuan zang qu jing fu xi qian, yun gong bao en li bei dian, Shu Tu Tong Da Hung Li Gong Xing Shi Jian Hua Yo Yuan. Xuanzang journeyed to the western region to bring sutras back. The master requited his parents' kindness by bowing towards the mountain peaks to the north. On different roads, yet with one destination, both monks displayed great power in their practices, doing real work with individual effort. They taught those who could understand. So Shifu compares him to Master Xuanzang, who was, of course, the, the famous Chinese Buddhist pilgrim of the Tang Dynasty, who went to India to bring back the sutras. So um, I wanted to, you can see there's, there's quite a few stories to go about uh, Master Empty Cloud's pilgrimage. We'll, we'll pick them up as we go. Um, the, the point is here about, first there were four monks who traveled with him and they, um, they couldn't take it. They got tired. They, they felt like they didn't know what the point was, right? And uh, kind of, you know, tragic. And, and you wish, uh, you wonder what the story would be like if they, if they stayed with him. Um, we, while myself, while 
practicing. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, got. Yeah, I'm. So I have some questions here about that process of uh, having images come to the mind while bowing. Um, we'll go into that later. That's theory on my part, speculation. I can't prove that what is going on. I'll just give you my uh, experiences and we can draw conclusions from those. Okay, so empty cloud was by himself at, at very quickly. People couldn't keep up. We had uh, lay people and some monks come and bow with us briefly and uh, repeated several times. David Rounds came and Peter Schmitz uh, came to bow with us uh, regularly. And uh, uh, at some point, uh, Roger Kellerman uh, came out. It was Bhikshu Hong Zhao at the time. And uh, it's just you, the highway, and your body, and the mind doing the work. However, I wanted to uh, tell an important part of our pilgrimage, which I don't know, uh, well, I do know, in fact, Master Empty Cloud also had his uh, mentor uh, helping him out. We'll, we'll find out about that as we go. Manjushri Bodhisattva came to save him twice, not once, but twice. Um, we had Master Shenhua, who, um, you could say was the third and maybe the most important member of the pilgrimage. Could anybody do such a pilgrimage now? I think it would be way, way harder uh, and more dangerous. But here's a story. And to say that I understand that what's really going on here, I don't. But I certainly know what happened. Some of the best Dharma protectors that, that I found with, uh, together with Marty Verhoeven were the law enforcement officers, particularly the California Highway Patrol, the CHP. They, uh, once they learned what we were about, they, without exception, were supportive and very uh, actually protected us in many cases. And uh, when we bow bowed through Malibu, Malibu is a place where wealthy people live right on the coast of California on Highway 1. And because it's a wealthy area, the police presence is very strong. Uh, there's people who have a lot to lose, get a lot of protection there. So um, the uh, officers, Lovick and Johnson, uh, got to know us pretty well. And they, this was their beat. And they would come out. And, uh, and because uh, the, 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 the traffic is going at 70, 80 miles an hour, and sometimes the road shoulder is very narrow. So we had to squeeze over uh, in the far left to, to do our bowing safely. And uh, one day, uh, Officer Lovick uh, pulled up behind us. And here's the CHP car with the, the red light flashing. And he goes, hi, fellas. He says, uh, no problem. He said, here, my wife baked these cookies for you. And he handed us a bag of cookies. And he said, but guys, he said, I want to ask you, he said, this is, uh, this is a really busy part of the highway. He says, could, I want you to get way over to the left. We don't want you to turn into Monk Hamburger. That, that wouldn't be appropriate. By the way, he said, you, you guys are wearing those brown robes. Um, they kind of blend in to the highway. Could you, wear, could you wear the red robe that the old monk behind you is wearing? And, and we're, we go, you know, slow turn over the shoulder. Uh, the old red, the old red, with a red robe? Well, actually, that's his robe. We're, we're not qualified. That's only have to be a... He said, well, if, if you could wear those robes, you would sure stand out a lot more. Uh, probably be less of a traffic hazard. And uh, so we said, uh, yeah, well, well, thank you for letting us know. He said, yeah, that old guy... He said, I, at the, uh, we turned into our station last week when they first kind of saw him. And uh, our, our post lawyer saw him out there bowing behind you and said he was really easy to see. 
Uh, so we, we hope that maybe you'll, if you can adapt, it'll, it'll make our jobs a little easier. Okay, fellas, take care. You said, uh, we'll see you next week. So got in his patrol car and drove away. And of course, we're looking at each other and thinking, what old monk in the red robe? And uh, so we went back to, uh, we were invited by the master to go to Asia, to go to Malaysia, 1978. And uh, so, we got back to San Francisco in preparation for the, our flight to, to Asia. And uh, we had a chance, there was a, a laywomen who were Master Hua's, uh, they would do you know, laundry and, and bring his food up. And uh, so we said, hey, uh, it was about three months ago, uh, did Shifu do anything unusual? It was a Saturday. And she said, let me think, Saturday. She said, oh, actually, you know, there was a day he, we were talking to him in his guest, uh, guest uh, room there, and he stood up and he went into his room and shut the door, and we didn't see him for like two hours. And he came back out and he said, they're okay now, there's no trouble. And sat back down and talked to us. And we were, we were curious about that. We didn't ask him, we did, that's not what you do as you're the disciple, but you know, she said, is that what you're talking about? We said, maybe so. So, so when you have a, a teacher like that, who is uh, able to keep you safe uh, from a distance, it's kind of, uh, it really makes a different, it makes an influence on your pilgrimage. So, uh, we will continue next week, right where we left off, with Master Empty Clouds, Three Steps, One Bow. And uh, meanwhile, I'm going to wish everybody Happy New Year. Didn't get the questions answered. And those of you who asked questions are thinking, wait, 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 we asked questions. I'll save them. I can save the chat here. And uh, I'll bring them up next week, because I think a lot of people are asking about that mysterious rising of images in the mind. Okay. So let's uh, say Happy New Year to everyone with the gift of merit that you can send with your heart wherever you like. and we can bow three times. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master.
Hari, bow in respect to the Venerable Master. Okay, that's going to do it for us for today. See you all next week. Happy New Year, everyone.